Oh, man, I kind of need to use the bathroom. It's gonna be hard using these crutches though. Ah, she just called the nurse, that's right, yeah. It's not working? Hello? Yes, uh, I want to go to the bathroom. Wait, what? Oh, crap, I did it again. I thought I was still in the hospital. Well, folks, you know what that means. Looks like I gotta do it. Part 2. Japanese hospitals, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to yet another episode of Yankee in Japan. As always, an American Yankee in the land of the rising sun. Domo, domo, domo. Yankee in Japan no atui mani desu yo. Alright guys, so last time we talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Japanese hospitals, as well as Japanese doctors, and the whole of the medical industry in Japan. Today, we're looking at part two and hoping to end the series. However, before we get into part two, just a reminder, please like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell over there too, where it goes ding ding. That way you get all of the great content that this channel produces, and you never miss a beat. Alright, without wasting any more time, let's check out part two. Okay, so last time we left off at the bad. So let's start off from there. Number three. Um Let's talk about drugs. You know what I'm saying? Nah, not those kind of drugs. What do you think I was talking about? Medication. Y'all tripping. Okay, real talk. Let's talk about medication in Japan. So I read on a website that Japanese meds are actually pretty strong. But I'll tell you, when it comes to painkillers, pain medication, I can assure you, they ain't. I hate Japanese painkillers. I can't stand most of them. So after my operation, um, I was on a sweet drug called fentanyl, on an IV drip. Now we all know what fentanyl is. If you don't, it's a very effective painkiller. So with the fentanyl, I felt very little pain. But after that, it felt like my foot was on fire for like two days straight. So I got this painkiller called, and I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Selicoxiv? Selicoxiv. Anyway, this Japanese medication, and it did barely anything for me. Nothing. Now, I couldn't sleep well for the first couple of days just because of the pain, but the nurses gave me a pretty effective sleeping medication, and it worked pretty well. But the painkillers, not so much. Now, a friend of mine who's also a foreigner, he got a colonoscopy and an endoscopy. I think I said that right. And he said that even with the anesthesia here, it was quote unquote vicious. So just be warned that when it comes to pain medication and numbing pain in Japan, especially if you're a pretty big guy, the doses and the, I don't know, I guess the ingredients that they use are just not that strong for us. I'm sure they work for Japanese people, at least from what I hear. But mine just weren't that good. Number four. Okay, let's talk a little bit about hospital life and what they provide for you. Now, if you're lucky enough to find a great hospital, kudos, great on you. However, there are many things you have to procure by yourself. Now, of course, food, clothing, bedding, and stuff like that, they are provided by the hospital and they are included with your hospital bill. So you don't have to worry about getting stuff like that. However, I was surprised that I had to buy my own soap. And when the nurses gave me my first meal, I noticed there were no chopsticks. So naturally, I called the nurse, and assuming they had just forgot them, I asked her, well, can I have some chopsticks? And she told me in just the most apologetic tone she could muster that patients have to get their own chopsticks, or you have to bring them from home. Wow, okay. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> But because the nurses there were so great, 
she found this beaten up pair of wooden disposable chopsticks somewhere. I don't know where. And she gave them to me. I don't know where she found them, but she was a great nurse. However, there are many things, like I said, that you have to get by yourself. Uh, you have to bring your own towel. You have to bring your own soap or buy, right? So when you get your pamphlet that tells you about the the rules of the hospital visit, basically all the things you have to know, read that thoroughly, but unfortunately, sometimes it might not be in English. Speaking of things you have to procure for yourself, Wi-Fi. There is no Wi-Fi in Japanese hospitals. We get free ambulance rides, but no Wi-Fi. Nandeyanen! That means what the heck in Japanese, especially in Kansai. But yeah, nandeyanen. How you not have no Wi-Fi? It's 2022, baby. Like, what are you gonna do? Talk to people? Who does that anymore? What is this, the 17th century? Now, I know I'm sounding real first world problems here, but come on, Japan is part of the first world. However, not all hope is lost. You can procure Wi-Fi, but you have to pay for it. So if you go to the convenience store that's in the hospital, again, if you have a nice hospital, you're in luck. If you go to the convenience store, there's a way you can get a pocket Wi-Fi. There's also a small terminal Wi-Fi you can get that will plug into the socket of the room if you're so lucky. But I think the pocket Wi-Fi is good enough. I was only there for one week, so of course I didn't really need it, but I burned through my data real fast, real fast. So keep that in mind, if you're gonna be on your phone a lot and you want Wi-Fi, you gotta pay for it, right? Five. Okay, another thing. For outpatient care, Japanese hospitals and clinics are usually closed on weekends and also on public holidays. However, they are open on weekdays, usually from about 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., okay? Now, some places do differ, but this is the norm. Now, let's say you fall down the stairs after drinking too much chew high on Saturday night. It's happened to all of us, right? Fear not, there are emergency clinics, but they do charge extra. So just be aware of that. Now, this is very important. For any emergency you have, you wanna call the number 119. In America, it's the opposite, 911. So it's kind of easy to remember if you're American, but it's the opposite. Remember, emergency, one, one, nine, six. Lastly, and we can probably just blame this on the times, no hospital visits were allowed during my stay. Now, I don't know if this is every hospital in Japan right now, but Corona is still a very big deal in Japan. I've also heard it's the same in Korea as well. It might be in this area of Asia, but people are very nervous and very scared about Corona still. It still kind of sucks that no hospital visits are allowed. Not even your family, nobody. All right, guys, you with me still so far? Lastly, let's talk about the ugly. Now, keep in mind the stuff I'm about to read to you doesn't always happen. But I've heard similar, less serious complaints from other fellow foreigners living in Japan. Also, I'm gonna be reading directly from Reddit. Now remember, this isn't every person. This will not necessarily happen to you, but just keep in mind, these things did happen. All right, this one comes from the username uh, Wanderous. Ranting time. I've had nothing but ridiculousness from Japanese doctors since I moved here a few years ago. I started experiencing a lot of rough GI symptoms and I spent more than a year getting diagnosed with everything from sinus infections to it's all in your head. Almost every visit resulted in antibiotics. Even when the doctor didn't really know what the problem was aside from general inflammation. Oh, and Kampo, freaking Kampo. As a side note, Kampo is what the Japanese call Chinese medicine. It doesn't taste very good, but I think it's pretty effective, at least it is for me. Or maybe it's all in my head. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I woke up with severe stomach pains and drove myself to the emergency care at 3 a.m. After an exam that involved the doctor prodding my stomach with his fingers and listening to my heart, no temperature or vitals were taken. The jittery idiot diagnosed me with probably just a stomach ache. He prescribed me two medications one of which the nurse later told me would be dangerous to take with my current medicine, which he had on file. The other medication was ibuprofen. 
The next day, I said, screw it, and I went to an international clinic an hour and a half away. Very first visit, he did an endoscopy. No other doctor had at that point. Diagnosed me with severe silent reflux, Barrett's esophagus, and intestinal inflammation. Been under his care since, and finally, finally can get on with my day without issues. Haven't been to a Japanese doctor since. Eee, pretty ugly. Okay, this next one comes from the user Nostradamus1111, or maybe that's 1011. When my father had slipped a C5, C6 disc in 2009, and the doctors didn't give him any painkillers, he decided to send me to Canada to study, to get away from the country. He told me, while high on oxycodone, given to him by the doctors at St. Luke's in Tsukiji, that old Japan would never change its ways. And I should not live or work in Japan, but rather go and explore new cultures for my own good. This next one comes from a user whose profile was deleted. Highlights include, I asked for an STD test in a hospital. The doctor said, why? Is your girlfriend a commercial sex worker? Broke my arm. No painkillers. The quote unquote doctor wrapped it in a flimsy bandage. Had to get it reset. Got told my blood sugar was normal. Googled the levels. Hmm, pre-diabetic. Hit my head and got a heavy concussion. Doctor asked me if I felt okay. I said, I'm not sure. He sent me home. This is all insane. This one comes from yet another deleted user. I've had both good and bad experiences with doctors here. My current GP is pretty boss, so I'm lucky there. When I was living in Saitama, I heard my GP telling a specialist in Japanese that the thing that was making me sick was homesickness. I was in the room and everything. <sighs> Last year, a friend of mine ended up dislocating her knee on the train and was sent to the hospital. She lay on a gurney for a few hours, screaming and crying in agony every time her muscle spasm, which was a couple of times per minute. The hospital offered her ibuprofen and a good dose of shame, as every time she made a noise, a nurse bustled over and told her to be quiet and act like an adult. She's terrified of hospitals now. Can't say I blame her. You guys still okay? Alright, let's do one more. This comes from the user from the north side or FRM the north side. I've been having GI problems since having my gallbladder removed a year and a half ago. And honestly, all the docs keep thinking I'm making stuff up or think I have a stomach virus. They won't do an endoscopy. They won't do an MRI to see if the surgery was botched, etc, etc. I've been to three hospitals already. I'm like at my wits end with the medical care here. Now, not all the posts on this Reddit page were bad. There were also some posts that had some pretty decent and good experiences, as well as some mixed experiences too. So it wasn't just all ranting about, oh, Japanese hospitals and doctors suck. So I want to share those with you too. The user Tokyo Hoon says, as a general rule for anything serious, you either want a specialist clinic or you want a large teaching hospital. Small private hospitals here are insanely risky. The care in specialist clinics is freaking amazing. My missus had her gallbladder out and the room was nicer than some hotels I stayed in on company money with Wi-Fi and cable TV and a menu selection. Not that much more expensive than a big hospital either. In university hospitals, you're going to get less opulent surroundings, but you're guaranteed to get docs and nurses that are actually up to date and are regularly cracking textbooks. It gets even better. This comes from the user Washiki Benjo. He says, or she, Gaijin tend to be uninformed, Gaijin means foreigners, and lack required linguistic ability to make informed choices with regards to medical care. So like I was saying with the communication, right? Uh, most Japanese doctors and nurses only speak Japanese, so it does help if you speak Japanese. He goes on to say, the result is that they tend to end up at the crap end of the scale and then generalize how bad Japanese medical care is. As a father with children paying at the Shakai Hoken. Now remember that's social insurance, right? From the last video, S-H-I, that's Shakai Hoken. 
He goes on to say, Medical care for my boys is free. I can visit any one of my locals for at worst a few thousand yen out of pocket with doctors I trust. Father-in-law with major coronary problems. Should have died at least twice. Still going strong after extended stays in great hospitals. My own son had pneumonia, was diagnosed in minutes, hospitalized and given all necessary care and follow-up. Why? Cause we researched it, shopped around, listened to what the locals said, etc, etc. Alright guys, so what did you think about those ugly Reddit posts? Pretty scary stuff. But again, just like those last two users said, remember stick with specialist clinics or university hospitals. I was lucky enough to go to a university hospital and a friend of mine who used to work there introduced me, so I got really lucky, well, I dare say blessed. All right, guys, again, thanks for sticking with me to this video to the end. I hope this series was helpful for you and you have a better idea of what to expect of hospitals and doctors in the land of the rising sun. Sate, kyou mo mitte kurete arigatou gozaimasu and thank you very gozaimashita.